what podcast reviewer 37 describes as an indiscriminate hellish ride that I would not wish on my worst enemy. The industry's elite have said time and again, man, fuck those guys. Get ready. If your ears had butts, they'd about to be fucked. Welcome to the Butt Fuck Nowhere Show. Oh yeah, welcome back everyone. All of our favorite people are here to a new episode of the Butt Fuck Nowhere Show. My name's Josh. I'm here today with good buddy Adam. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about the internet. I'm going to rant on the internet. And then also uh, we're going to talk about memory. This isn't going to be about Spectrum Internet, is it? No, it's just going to be about the internet in general. Because I do kind of want to talk about that Homestar Runner shit you were talking about, about. But about weird things that people still have from like old internet shit, but like it's on their car. Okay. Like, because that is interesting to me. But anyways. Um... If you want, before we get into that, you can go to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube where you are very welcome to subscribe. And we are so close. We are just 17 viewers, 17 subscribers away. And uh, what's very sad is um, uh, Frank and Ruben don't even subscribe to the fucking YouTube channel. So uh, I, we, we could we could lower the number if those two fucking assholes would, <laughs> would just subscribe. And I ripped them a new one on, uh, I believe it was Team Killing Glitch Car- Glitch Tars, the new, one of the newest episodes, where I said, and you know, thanks guys for subscribing, and Ruben was like, oh, I'm not subscribing, I'm like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, well, you're on the fucking show, you're a part of the fucking shit, why would you not subscribe and help ourselves out? And he's just like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, god damn it! <laughs> so, hopefully those two assholes, and then Frank said that he subscribed, but then he immediately unsubscribed after he heard the content. And I'm like, Frank, you're on the content, and he's like, exactly, that's why I did it. <laughs> God damn it. So, anyways, uh, go to YouTube and subscribe to Game Rage Magazine. You can follow us on social media at Game Rage Magazine on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Mag on Twitter slash X. You can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram, and you can go check out the All Gas No Trash podcast. Additionally, if you like anime and mangas, you can go listen to Frank on the Anime Syndicate podcast, and you can follow him at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore podcast. I'm ready to explode. About what? Your, your balls? <laughs> I'm full and my dick is your ready dick is, to explode. Your, your balls are full and your belly is full. Yeah. Because we just had Chipotle and it's also day 24 going on 25 into No Nut November. So yeah. I agree. Again, like I like I said before, my balls feel heavy. Like they feel like, you know how your balls hang like, right? No, I feel like they're hanging lower. I feel like they're close to my knees now. Maybe that's why old men's balls hang so lower is because they're just full of jizz. They're not jerking off enough. My dick just, it just feels hot. like Hot? Like the tip. The For me, tip, the tip yeah. is like, uh, it's like, it tingles. I don't know. It's weird. It's hard to explain. Yeah. And I, I'm just kind of done with it. I, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just ready to jack off. Like. <laughs> yeah, no. But then also at the same time, I was, I was saying before, uh, new, numerous men that I know that are on Instagram. Mm. I don't know if this is the only thing they do on Instagram, but they follow numerous accounts of. Whores? Thirst traps and mm-hmm. all that yeah. stuff, uh, and I, I just can't imagine doing that, especially if you're fucking married or even if you have a significant other. That that would just be. If you're gonna do that shit, just be discreet about it. Yeah, don't put it out there. Don't like, put it out there. Why are you following them? Why why not just make a fake account? Why do you got to use your main account? <laughs> your main account to do that shit. It's just, it's very fucking strange, but. And it, it just made me think about come, talking about the previous episode about separating yourself from other people. Yeah. And it almost wants it, – it almost makes me want to drive myself to pushing or extending No Nut November for myself. Just as far as you can? Just as far as I can because I'm like, I can't be like these fucking assholes, dude. Well, do you think that there is a point – where you will just be like, oh, I don't feel the tingly anymore. Like, I don't feel that my dick's I don't, not hot. I don't know. Like, I don't what know. if it never goes away? What if it just constantly, what if it just gets worse? I don't know. It's, it's, I think, unfortunately, because of the sensitivity, your boner just, it, it's probably more sensitive than ever. Like, literally anything could provoke it. Yeah. Like, nudging it against your bed or. Yeah. 
or when you, when, when you wear pants and shit. Oh, yeah. And it's like, you just have a stream of phantom cum just fucking hanging out. You're like, what the, why, why, where does this come from? And you're like, oh, yeah, I hugged that girl earlier. Like, oh, yeah. Fuck, Not what even the that, fuck, man. Just, ru- you know, your oh, dick rustling against- in your pants. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, I went for a jog and now. <laughs> now I have an erection. <laughs> shit. Uh, that shit's just whack, dude. I, I hate that. But I, I don't even think it's possible to discipline your dick to not do those things because there's all these things that could provoke it to just start, you know, on its way. Well, it's the biological imperative to fucking create more people, right? Like, that's the whole fucking programming in our DNA or whatever. And, like, maybe we're going to get into this later when we talk about, like, what memory is and shit, but, like, it, it's it's that weird shit that's, like, encoded into you. Mm-hmm. Um, But, I don't know. It, yeah, it sucks. It's horrible. But it's uh, unfortunate that we all have to fucking deal with it. Well, those of us who have penises, I guess. Um, I guess we could all just become femboys and just start taking estrogen, and then that would fucking maybe get the urge to go away. Why would that help? I, I mean, well, if you don't want to fucking feel like you need a nut all the time, I mean, that's... I think that fucking takes it away. I think I think that would help. How does estrogen help you become less well, horny? Well, because it's testosterone. That's what makes you fucking like want to fuck all the time. Or like, what makes you? That's what gets you. Women dick are hard. just as horny. I don't understand what you're getting at. They're not though. I feel like you just want to well, take a shot we, at femboys. <laughs> what do you mean? I wasn't taking a shot at femboys. Then why mention it? I was just saying. I think because I, I think that femboys don't like. I think that if they if you when you take estrogen and shit, like you don't get as. Like your dick doesn't get hard. No, I don't think so. I don't. No, think I think that's exactly. I don't what it know does. enough about biology to contend you on that one. So therefore, I'm right. Okay, perfect. All right, good. All no, right. Anyways. no. <laughs> to be determined after you know the what? fact hey, I, lo- I look into it. That's what we need to fucking. We need to find someone who's a, a specialist on like uh, biological processes or whatever. We need to interview him and be like, hey, listen, if a man takes estrogen and becomes a femboy, will he be less? Will his dick get hard less? And then they'll be like, yes, Josh, that's correct. That is exactly what happens. Fuck or no. maybe they'll tell me no. Maybe they'll be like, no, actually, they get their, their dick gets hard even. Ironically, their dick gets hard more often when they take estrogen. Uh, but anyways, uh, I, I you, you had mentioned earlier about how you saw some dude with, uh, or some, not, not some dude, but some person with the Homestar there a, Runner. There was a fucking car, and it had the most obscure character, or one of the more obscure <laughs> characters from Homestar Runner, which was a big thing. In the 2000s. Yeah. And this person had a sticker of the cheat. It's like this little guy, he's got like a cheetah, a cheetah print on his fur. Or whatever. I yeah. don't even know what the fuck the cheat is. Whatever it's, yeah. Yeah, but he's like a little small character. He's kind of like Snoopy or he, he's not even a dog. I don't know what the fuck he is, but, <laughs> but just the fact that somebody had it on their car, I'm like, that is so obscure to the inter- that internet that nobody else would know about that. Other than a specific group of people, like ourselves. Yeah, um, I mean, I saw the other day, I did see, it was maybe like a month ago, I did see fucking a, uh, what's his name? Uh, God damn it, I, now, I don't know why his name just literally fell out of my fucking head. Uh, Strong Bad. The fuck, I saw a picture of him on there. And then I saw somebody who had a little, it was the Trogdor, the dragon, like the little fucking thing. And I'm like, okay, cool. That one kind of makes sense because like Trogdor, nowadays, not really, I guess, but like back then Trogdor was mainstream, right? That was like a thing that went, like everybody knew what that was. Trogdor! Like then, I mean, that shit was in Guitar Hero. Yeah, it was. Like, I mean, which is cool. But uh, everybody knew what that was, but not a lot of people knew the whole Homestar Runner shit. And then I saw the the coolest thing I ever saw was I don't know if you remember Newgrounds. Yeah, I remember. Newgrounds. But you remember that logo that they had where it was like that little tank or was, whatever. Yeah. I saw somebody with that logo on their fucking like uh, their back window. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, that's cool. I don't even know if Newgrounds. I don't think it ex- does it exist. I don't know if it exists. I think it does. Day. Yeah. Um, but not the way we probably think of probably it, not. It's probably not the same as how it was back then, man. No. But dude, back then all that, fl- all that internet, like that flash animation shit, dude, that was all like peak two thousands, early two thousands, late nineties, like internet, all yeah. the flash shit, like all those people that were just making shit and posting it on new grounds or making games and just having on new grounds. That was wild. Yeah. That was a while last time. There was one that was like after Columbine, they made this game that was the school shooting fucking uh, <laughs> Newgrounds game. <laughs> you were stick figures, and you'd go around and like shoot other 
fucking people. It was hilarious, man. Um, granted, sure, it's not the most sensitive or whatever, but that's like a cool example of, oh man, look at these people that have this talent that exists out there on the internet that is being completely underutilized. Like a dude who has the skill and the knowledge to make a flash game. Yeah. That's a guy you could use on, well, back then at least. That's a guy you could use like on your team, right? Um, or if you had an internet page that was, uh, if you had an idea for a website and you wanted somebody that was going to make games. Like, you, you know, when Disney had a, a website where you can play, you know, whatever fucking games. Yeah. Or, or Nickelodeon, you can go and do that shit. If you were up, if you were a young gentleman, a young upstarting gentleman, and you're like, I need that shit. I'm gonna make a new site. Yeah. I need, I need an asshole like this from Newgrounds. Yeah, and that's that's who you could pull from to fucking do that shit because those are people that had real talent, like legit talent. That were all, and most of them were probably all self-taught too. Like they probably just went on fucking some weird ass forums back in the day and fucking learned how <laughs> to like do flash coding and shit. Or like I remember. Uh, when we were first starting to do this back in the original incarnations and in the in the mid 2000s when we were starting to do like podcasting uh, I literally bought the four dummies book on like how to do like flash animation and that kind of stuff because I was thinking like oh man we could do like these types of things uh, as in addition to like whatever the podcasting and I was just like, oh, this like you got to be smart to do this. You can't be some fucking dumb fucking bitch doing this shit. Like, you got to be a smart guy to fucking learn how to do this shit. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was too stupid to fucking figure it out. But all right. Anyways, this this is going to detract from what we're oh, yeah. talking about. Slightly. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk about stickers. OK, I want to know. I wish I could meet somebody. <laughs> Maybe we can interview them. But the guys that put anime stickers on their fucking car. <laughs> And it's all waifus and shit. Yeah. What what is that? I can't tell if that's a flex or you're just so you're so uh void of any type of shame or any I mean maybe anime is just cool at this point that nobody really cares, but the fact that you would just put waifus on your car. Yeah. Man. I, I'm not even talking I mean, I'm not even talking just the small ones. The people that have like a whole decal. Oh, that, it's the like, whole side of their fucking car. Yeah. It's like them laying on their side or some shit. Yeah. It's like the body pillow fucking image. <laughs> I don't know what the sh- I don't know what the deal with that is, but you I, know, I'm very interested in why people even do that. Because that's just very obnoxious. That is, and I've noticed that on a lot of uh those like JDM type fucking cars that, that are out there. They all have the little and it's like the weird it's the weird fucking ones where they're like peeking over. It's like yeah, the, yeah. It's like the Kilroy was here shit from like World War II, <laughs> but they're like just peeking over the fucking top of the window or like the top of the, the panel or whatever. Yeah. And, and like, I don't know, man. I hate that shit. It really pisses me off when I see some asshole with that lined all the way around. And it's not just on the rear window. They got it all going on all the fucking side passenger windows and the fucking drivers. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here with this nonsense. But you're right. I would like to interview somebody to find out like, all right, man, what's the deal? Cause they and you know what I, now that let you say that uh, you know because they all put their little Instagram tag on the on their cars right I'm gonna st- next one I see that has an Instagram tag I'm gonna hit them up and be like hey, hey man dickhead. like and I'm gonna just be like hey man like I was wondering if you'd like to come on for an interview and then just and then we just ambush them with the fucking what the fuck is wrong with you like <laughs> or we'll say hey we saw you speeding on uh we we're we're thinking about reporting you but yeah. Uh, we noticed your registration was expired, and we're thinking about fucking uh, talking to CHP. You, but, or you could do an interview yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah, you could just come on, and then we'll. This we'll is just extortion. Pretend. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. This is exactly extortion. So, what do you want? What do you want to do? You have two choices. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, all right. Well, that's that's like I said that on the end of that. But uh, all right. So I, I had this thought earlier uh, about like memory and like what. I don't know, like, what is it, or, like, how does it work? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm i an idiot, obviously, and, and fucking basically maybe maybe one level above mental retardation. I don't know, <laughs> but, like, you know, I, I was just thinking about memory and how, at least with, like, all your senses, like, a touch, a smell, a taste, obviously sight, but, like, and a sound. Like, when you hear things or you see things or you taste something – it like triggers like memory shit. And so obviously, I mean, oh, I listen, I'm, I'm a Shasta fucking Mark. I'm a diet Shasta Mark. And the reason I am. But you're predisposed. To yeah, like because my grandfather uh, literally had a full entire like this is where I got the need and the desire to need to have a garage fridge was from my fucking grandpa. And like, 
I that's just de- just dedicated as sodas or beer. Yeah, that's and that's exactly <laughs> what I have. I have we're, we're literally sitting in the garage studio staring at the fucking fridge that is dedicated to drinks. That's it. That's all that's in there. All right. And uh, the only reason I needed that was because of fucking I was predisposed to it by my grandpa, like you said. But when I would go over to his house, he had this fucking this like nine bay garage. And he had, it was like a two story nine bay garage. And he had this fridge in there, this big ass fucking fridge. And it was one of those fridges from like that Indiana Jones hit in in the fucking Crystal Skull movie or whatever, like where it was like lead line and shit. It was one of those big ass fucking fridges. And it was from like, I think the 1920s. And he literally had it full of every diet Shasta flavor you could imagine. <laughs> like all of them. Why? I don't know. He liked Shasta, I guess. I, I, well, okay. I will say this. He was a cheap fuck. All right. He was a cheap bastard. And that was one thing my grandpa was infamous for was like not spending money on shit. And Shasta is, I don't know if it is now, but it was, I'm sure at the time in the nineties, the cheapest fucking soda you could buy. The poor man's coke. Like it, it is. Yes. It was like, he had Dr. Shasta. <laughs> he had fucking, uh, whatever their version of Coke was. I forget what the fuck that was called. But, uh, the, the two that I, I distinctly got the most of were the grapefruit one. And the fucking cream soda. That's those are oddity flavors. Those are the two best flavors, in my opinion. Uh, and my dad and my my mom and dad would like never fucking buy Shasta soda. I don't know why. Because like, it's out of spite. Maybe because yeah. like oh you, it's like that thing about like uh, when you go out to a restaurant and you want to order chicken nuggets and like we have chicken nuggets at home. Order something else. Like it's that I guess. <laughs> oh you can get chi- you can get Shasta at your grandpa's house for free. All right, we're not paying for that. So. Uh, Anytime I would go to my grandpa's house, I would have, he try, he made me try the grapefruit, and I'm like, I don't like grapefruit, and he's like, oh, don't worry, you're going to like this. Oh, man, delicious. I loved it. And then same thing with the cream soda. I was always a big cream soda guy. Honestly, the diet Shasta cream soda is one of my favorite cream sodas. Like, it's just because, again, it's like, it's predisposed from childhood. But anytime I drink a Shasta grapefruit or a Shasta fucking cream soda, I immediately get a flashback of pulling, like it's it hits me every single time without fail. The second I taste it, I get the flashback of pulling that metal level lever on the fridge to open the fucking fridge up to reach in and grab one. And I get like, I get also, I don't just get the like the flavor of it or whatever. I get like the feeling of like it was summertime because his garage was like unventilated. So it was like a thousand fucking degrees in there. And I get like the feeling of heat. I get like the feeling of sweat like while I'm fucking doing that. It's the strangest fucking shit. If you don't get the soda quick enough, you you, you probably, die. You die. <laughs> like you will die. It was, uh, we used to, me and my cousins used to always say it was a mission to go to the back garage and get soda. And like a- we would rock, paper, scissors to see who had to be the loser to go get the fucking soda out the back. It's like the Sahara Desert. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it was a, it was a 50, 50 foot trek from the door to the- It was, yeah, it was a 50 foot trek. It was all <laughs> desert. If you didn't move quick enough, you, you die. die. Yeah, and then you had to fucking be smart too because you had to solve a puzzle to get into the thing because uh, my grandpa was a psychopath, so like he would lock the thing, but he would not only, he wouldn't just have one keyed lock on the deadbolt because he had he had a he had a uh, like a security door on the door to get into the garage, and it was a security door, and you had the deadbolt was keyed one lock one key, and then the little the, the handle was keyed another key, and then when you open that door, you had another door that had another deadbolt and another fucking regular handle on it, which were all both keyed two different keys. So you had to figure out four different keys to open the fucking thing. And in the summertime, with that smog and shit, like, you could choke to death. Like, you could die. Like, you'd be lack of oxygen. So you'd be out there for 15 minutes fucking trying to... uh, But anyways, I would get all these flashbacks from, like, just drinking a sip of soda. Or, like, if, uh, like, my grandma wore this, like, certain fucking kind of, like, scent or whatever, right? I don't remember what it was, but, like, if I would smell it anywhere else... I'd immediately get flashbacks of like the fucking little weird bar that they had in, in my grandma's like house. She had this weird little like bar area and like, it smelled like old people like, you know, but uh, it didn't smell anything like the perfume. Like it's, I don't know. It's just strange to me how memory is like, is tied to like all of our senses. I I don't know, man. I'm just, like I said, I'm retarded. I don't get it, but it's just strange. You've just been programmed by Shasta to have these memories. You're right. (laughs) Thank you, this episode brought to you by Shasta. Shasta has been sponsoring my life. I'm a corporate shill for fucking Shasta. So was your grandpa, did he have a specific soda for specific situations, or did he have certain flavors on certain days? 
No, he had every flavor all the time. He drank, <laughs> like, like, he would drink grape, regular Dr. Pepper Shasta. He'd be, he'd have Dr. Shasta, he'd have the grape one. He'd have Mount Shasta, which was the Mountain Dew one, all right? Uh, yeah, yeah. He'd have fucking, uh, I don't know, whatever the Coke one was, he'd have, like, the Cherry Cola fucking version. He'd okay, have, but did he have that for breakfast and shit, or? No, he would just drink, he would just be like, hmm, what do I feel like right now? And then he would just, <laughs> he would just have it. Yeah. And then a lot of times he'd be like, I remember when I was real young, he'd be like, oh, hey, let's go out in the garage and get some fucking whatever. And I remember he had this he had this desk in there. It was like this old metal desk. And I, I feel like he built it himself out of like sheet metal. Yeah. But he had this metal desk and in front of it was this window and it was this bay window. And he had all these little like plastic tractors and like all these little things right in there. And I have them now. Like I, I have them from when after he died. Like I still have them They're upstairs in my room. Uh, in my man cave room, but I have all those old things, and I, it's like you remember those weird fucking things, all related to drinking goddamn Shasta. And we go out there, and he'd be like, "Oh, let's go get a Shasta," and we'd go out there, and he'd be like, "Oh, let's. What do you feel like today?" And I'd be like, "Root beer," because like I was, I was, I like root beer from like a young age. He'd be like, "Oh, okay, we'll get you the." I don't know, whatever, diet Shasta root beer and pop one up, here you go. And he'd be like, hmm, what do I want? And he'd be like, oh, let's see, we got this one, we got, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have fucking orange soda today. Ha <laughs> ha, that sounds good. And then he'd be like, I remember when I used to get orange soda at the soda shoppy for 99 cents a fucking a bottle or whatever. And like, he'd, he'd tell me this whole fucking story and he'd be like, I remember when I was living in North Dakota, I'd get the tractor and he'd point to the little tractor that was on the little window thing and he'd be like, Actually, it looked like that one right there. I was driving that to the soda shoppy when I was eight years old. And my dad was like, what did you do with that goddamn tractor, you son of a bitch? And he, <laughs> and fucking, I, I remember all those ridiculous stories from that shit. But yeah, again, it's all tied to like a taste, a smell, a feel, a touch. Like, uh, you know, I, it's very strange how those things trigger memory. So... I don't know. I was just my rant about memory, I guess. That's pretty much all I got to say about it, I think. You got anything else to add? Um, yeah, maybe food for me. I don't know so much about drinks. But thinking about some of the foods I've eaten, how it reminds me of certain people, or... Uh, well, shit, man. When it comes to sports, I hate to bring up the Freddie Freeman Grand Slam, but... When I hold, when I hold the rally towel and the scarf that was given, uh, dude, I like I immediately transport to that moment and thinking about, like I I could see that vividly in my fucking mind, how that whole thing unraveled and where I was sitting. Like I'll never look at that section of that stadium the same ever again. Like it's 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 weird. It's weird that those two fucking things strike that. Yeah. It's strange. It's very weird. And I don't know what the mechanism is. I'm sure there's some biological reason why that happens. It's post-traumatic stress disorder. Could be. In a positive. In a positive way. It's yeah. positive post-PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. All right. Well, fuck it. I guess we can end it here. We got a good 20 minutes out of it. We got 21 minutes out of it. So actually longer than that. Shit. We got almost 25 minutes out of it. Anyways. All right. Cool. Well, go to Game Rage Magazine on Instagram and TikTok. Game Rage Mag on YouTube. Or Game Rage Magazine on YouTube also. Game Rage Mag on Twitter slash X. You can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official. And you can follow Frank at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast. Catch you guys on the next one. This has been the Butt Fuck Nowhere Show. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe and like on Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. Also on Twitter slash X at Game Rage Mag. Also visit our website, www.gameragemagazine.com for a host of other podcasts and more. Thanks for listening.